All right, I am back. This is ex history of exchange server part two. So um, I had to end the video because it was taking time. So uh, uh, I just don't want to make it long. I just want to make sure you're understanding and it's not getting boring. So um, exchange server 2003 was uh, one of the exchange servers that just came in after uh, exchange server 2000. And it was just released on September 28, 2003. And uh, this version was good. You know why? Because this Exchange Server 2003 was, able, was capable or was, uh, um, was able to install in, in Server uh, 2000 or... Uh, you were also able to install it in uh, server 2003 so uh, the good thing is like if a company is trying to upgrade their exchange server from 2000 to 2003 they uh, let me remove this they they had no um, like they don't really have to just go and um, buy another operating system license and then uh, have like let's get server 2003 because we cannot install it in server 2000 so exchange server 2003 was uh, was uh, like uh, capable of uh, to run capable to run on windows server 2000 and uh, 32 bit of windows server 2003 so uh, this is very important point to uh, um, just note uh, uh, it was able to run on a, a server um, uh, 2000 and uh, server uh, 2003 but 32 bit so it, it it was not able it was not capable to run on uh, Windows Server 2003 64 bit uh, of version so one of the uh, good features about Exchange Server 2003 was like uh, uh, they just made improvements like when integrating with uh, Active Directory to improve performance and reliability. So um, uh, one of the other thing that they did is like they added mobility feature. Mobility feature means that users were able to like uh, access their emails from anywhere they want like th through their mobile devices like through their phone uh, all, uh, through their phone or any other smart uh, phones that they had at that time so they were able to access it from of uh, access it from that uh, from there so uh, w that's one of the other features that uh, was just enabled with uh, um, mobility uh, and uh, one of the other uh, enhancement uh, was like disaster recovery uh, disaster recovery was uh, one of the other enhancement that they made and it was the one of the feature that really helped administrators to bring like their the servers uh, quickly uh, uh, and uh, allow uh, the server to send and receive emails when the message uh, store are being recovered from backup so uh, what I mean to say in here is like if your exchange server just crashed uh, if your exchange server just crashed in here and then uh, you, you, you already have uh, disaster recovery features in there like you got clustering uh, and you got all other things configured so while you are just restoring uh, your your like your backup uh, what you were able to do is like uh, the exchange server was still uh, able to send and receive emails while while it's it was just restoring from backup so one this is one of the other uh, important thing that we need to know is uh, the enhancement in uh, disaster recovery so uh, Windows Server 2003 really helped Exchange and Active Directory 2003 with Active to Active and Active to pass, uh, Passive clustering feature. So uh, you were able to like configure two Exchange servers and then you were able to like configure clustering. So uh, this was like Active to Active. Active to Active means that at the same time like 
this server is uh, like responding uh, to emails uh, and this server is also responding to emails like if a user is trying to access a database or uh, an email address uh, so um, it's it's simply just gonna go here or here uh, because both servers are active at the same time they are performing clustering feature and at the same time they are just responding to uh, clients uh, or users uh, 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 what you call that uh, users uh, I'm searching for the name users request so when a user requests something it's just it's just responding both of them can re respond but when it comes to active and passive uh, what are we doing in here is uh, this is active and this is standby or you can also call it passive so when a user send a request it just gonna go always here and here but somehow if the server goes down and no longer available uh, what what what's gonna happen in here that this server is gonna become active and when the users send a request is all the all the requests are just gonna go to this server because this server is now active so this is one of the other good features with uh, active to active and active to uh, passive clustering where we are making sure that we have failover feature running in case if one of the exchange goes down we still have connectivity so uh, <clears throat> one of the other uh, good things that we have in here is uh, about exchange server is uh, it was just available on standard and enterprise edition and uh, if you remember with our other <coughs> exchange 5.5 it was uh, uh, like 5.5 and uh, it was like 16 GB and then we, we had like terabytes of data available uh, so uh, with uh, exchange server 2003 standard edition uh, we, we got like a uh, the maximum database size that we can have is like 75 GB so uh, let me just write it in here so uh, that's gonna be easier for you and I'm gonna remove that so uh, with the standard version of uh, server exchange server 2003 it's gonna be 75 GB of database size and then with enterprise edition uh, it's gonna be uh, 16 terabyte of database size so uh, this is one thing to know the other thing that you need to know is that the version of Microsoft Exchange Server 2003 is like compatible with 32-bit version only it's not gonna work with Windows Server 2003 64-bit edition so like I said earlier it is going to install with 32-bit of Server 2003 it will not work it will not work with 64-bit of uh, version of uh, 2003 so one of the other thing that you see in here is front-end and back-end role used in exchange uh, used in exchange server 2003 that's another thing that we got so uh, exchange server uh, is gonna send and receive emails so how this a process is happening like how the exchange server is sending and receiving emails like uh, inside your organization like internally or externally like sending an email to like to external user outside user so uh, this is actually happening uh, through a rule so uh, front-end and back-end like all your uh, mailboxes all your accounts or your email addresses they are like stored in exchange server but there are like different roles in exchange server uh, that, that that which are like working to do the job like to store mailboxes to send an email inside your organization to send an email outside your organization to restrict something so all those features are 
in Exchange Server. So uh, front end and back end role they are used in Exchange Server 2003 and they are very important roles. So front end role uh, uh, server role is responsible for mail flow responsible for mail flow which means that the front end is responsible for mail flow yeah, like all sending and receiving emails like sending from here to here get this email from John to Nick and Nick to John and Jeff or anyone so it's the all those sending and receiving the email flow that that is happening in Exchange Server 2003 is through front end and the back end server role is responsible to store the mailbox uh, actually so all your mailboxes that are like stored in databases the all those jobs are being done through back and roll this one sorry back and backhand roll cool front end mail flow back end store mailboxes do the management of mailboxes all those things so uh <clears throat> One other thing that I forgot about the Exchange Server 2003 is uh, they also introduced like an improved anti-antivirus anti and anti-spam features. So uh, as you all know that um, we're gonna learn more about antivirus and anti-spam, but for now you know that when st these days internet is not secure because everyone is uh, like trying to hack something like hackers are trying to steal data they're trying to send viruses so uh, there are like many uh, unknown emails that are like coming to you on a daily basis most of them are like viruses and most of them are like spams uh, so what exchange server is doing is like exchange server 2003 is like there was like improvement uh, on the antivirus and anti-spam features so that it will be able to catch those viruses recognize those viruses and know those viruses that it is a virus and I'm gonna block it so if your exchange server got no antivirus and anti-spam features what's gonna happen is that viruses are just gonna come as an email to your uh, outlook and then once you open it it's gonna spread in your computer and then anything can happen so there was like improve improvement on antivirus and anti-spam features too on exchange server 2003 Exchange Server 2007 is another uh, version that we have and Exchange Server 2007 uh, was uh, really an uh, improvement uh, that, that was made. Uh, it was a real improvement from Microsoft because uh, it, it was, it was uh, it was released on 2007 and uh, what happened was like there was no front-end and back-end concept so in Exchange Server 2003 there was like back-end and front-end concept but with Exchange Server 2007 there was the concept of roles and there was five different roles that we had so uh, the first role that we had was like hub transport role. Hub transport role was responsible for sending and receiving messages inside your organization and outside your organization too. Um, so it was responsible uh, that uh, hub transport role is responsible or was responsible in Exchange Server 2007 to send and receive emails inside your organization and then uh, we had client access, we had mailbox role. Uh, I'm going to talk more about these roles in Exchange Server 2016. Uh, so for now, uh, we, we had another role which was like edge transport role for sending and receiving emails outside the organization. And there was like security enhancement, uh, uh, like anti-spam features. There was like too many um, 
good things or too many updates added to anti-spam features where you were able to block domains for example every day when you log into your outlook like uh, an email is coming to your outlook saying um, hey I'm gonna sell this to you uh, in a in a cheap price and when you see that this is coming from a domain that you really don't know so with anti-spam features of exchange server 2007 you were able to block domains you were able to block addresses you were able to block um, like different extensions or like different kind of diff different things so there was really an enhancement with uh, exchange server 2007 and one of the other thing that we had was uh, uh, we had was exchange server um, introduction of SCR CCR LCR clustering features so these like if you remember with exchange server 2000 and 2003 uh, we we had to like use uh, a clustering feature of Windows uh, server to like uh, 2000 or 2003 or uh, they they Windows operating system clustering features but with um, it, when it co when it comes to Exchange Server 2007, uh, with the uh, latest updates that it came up with, like so update one, Service Pack one, Service Pack three, uh, there was like built-in like uh, uh, features the, like LCR, local continuous replication, that you can you could configure with uh, with an Exchange Server. Uh, no need to do extra work with uh, on your uh, uh, operating system based uh, uh, clustering uh, configuration so uh, these were the important things that we, 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 we had to do and so this was really a big uh, uh, really a big improvement in clustering features that we had so we are going to learn a, uh, more about clusterings uh, in our exchange server 2016 and then one of the other thing uh, which was like uh, which was exchange management shell exchange management shell was introduced uh, with exchange server 2007 where uh, most of the things that you do uh, in in like graphic uh, interface, uh, you 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 were able to do uh, through commands. So exchange management shell is another way of configuring Exchange Server 2007 through commands. Through commands. For example, if you want to create new mailbox, if you want to create new email address, through uh, uh, you 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 can do it through Exchange Management Shell. If you want to delete a mailbox, if you want to like uh, install uh, or do the migration uh, or do the moving of mailboxes from one database to another database, uh, you, you you were able to do that. So let me uh, just give you uh, a good example that uh, when I was working with Exchange Server 2007, most of the features that uh, uh, that that was not uh, available, like most features were not available through graphic. Uh, when you go to console and you try to click on properties, you were not able to see it because Microsoft just wanted you to uh, configure all those features through commands. So uh, it was available uh, through command uh, uh, com PowerShell configuration only. So th that was uh, one of the other improvements that we had. And then we got Exchange Management Console. So it was like a Microsoft Management Console. It's a, it was like a console where you were able to configure uh, or you, you were able to uh, just do the configuration. So all your graphic uh, uh, user interface was uh, with Exchange Management Console. It's it's just a console. It's not, nothing other, uh, not not anything else other than that. So one of the other things that we had was transport rules. Transport rules were very important. It was like a powerful engine to uh, configure rules. Like if an attachment comes out from outside with uh, like a uh, with a with, with a name uh, market block it 
if an attachment comes from outside with with a with, with, with a name market uh, and with a domain name of market.com and with a user of john at market.com block it so all those rules were just configured with uh, your exchange uh, with, with your exchange transport rules so uh, I think I'll have to make another part of this video because it's already 20 minutes uh, so uh, I hope that this this that this part two was informative uh, and you learned something so uh, please leave me a comment if you have any question uh, and I'll answer to that